are ready to go racing round two of the Euro NASCAR two season. Martin Dubek secured his first victory in almost 18 months yesterday. Can he make it two from two? He's on the outside of the front row once again as they go racing. It's Linster on the inside line. This time he squeezes out Dubek before they can even get to the corner. Uh, outside line for Benedetti not working well. He gets pushed out in the pack by uh, some of the others in his Cal Racing machine. But it is Linster from Dubek. 24 hours ago, but a collision at turn 11 there. Just out behind shot. We had a car being hooked around on the front end and being spun. I didn't see quite who that was in the mid pack, but someone got spun there. Uh, just outside the top 10. Oh, and the 69 car of Melvin de Groot for the second race in a row ends up damaged. I believe he was the car whose front end um, got hooked, basically. He was the car that involuntarily spun somebody else. It's Linster that leads from Dubek, then it's Capelli, but here comes Patrick Schorber. He looks to the inside at turn two. He makes a car's width and he gets through into third position in the number three car. Thomas DeFell now having a look to the inside. In problems again in pit road, so this is not the way he wanted to start the season and this is Ken Kumiwa going around and oh, that was a lot of luck that he didn't get it. That's the thing, isn't it? As much as that is an unfortunate moment for him to lose out in that fashion, he at least didn't get collected. He is, however, now lodged deep in the gravel. We now go back to green flag. Uh, this race, of course, scheduled for 15 laps. And we are currently uh, on lap five of the race. So lap five ongoing at the moment. We rejoin the battle then at full speed between Linster and Dubeck. And Dubeck looking racy behind his Hendrix Motorsport colleague, of course, Linster. We'll be handing this car over to Liam Hazemans for the pro race. He has the pressure of handing a car over in something like raceable condition. Well, there you go. Dombrovsky got it done. Hang, hung around the outside at four and five to get the inside for six. But Chrysonis fires back. Julian Reberg uh, watching on, seeing what opportunities may lay for him. Dombrovsky again with the inside line. Uh, just trying to hold off Chrysonis. He's trying to get that position back, but he can't quite do it. Uh, looks like Dombrovsky has sixth place netted then at least for this lap. But there's still a lot of racing left to go in this one. The Linster clear of the firing line at this stage. Patrick Schorber still not quite close enough. Dubek bouncing across the kerbs there, locking up the front right tyre as well. And again towards turn 12, Schorber looks to the inside, thinks better of it, carries more momentum through turn 12 though. That will continue all the way through turn 13 despite the dirty air coming from the rear of Dubek's car. Jill Linster is clear and home free at the front to finally claim his first win of the season. And Patrick Schorber is going to try and drag race with Martin Dubek to the line. Linster wins and it will just be Dubek that holds on to second place by just over a tenth of a second. Linster wins it, Dubek second, and Patrick Schorber rounding out your overall podium. Cars roll in two by two formation. Who will it be that leads it into turn one? Can Garelli get the start he needs this time around? They are rolling and racing. And again, Garelli does not get off the line as quickly as Downhauer. Oh, and Sebastian Blake Molen in a contact there. All sorts of dramas. Cars everywhere on at the first lap. We didn't even get to turn one. And there is a lot of damaged hardware there on at the main straight. Sebastian Blake Molen was hooked into a spin there. Red flags around the circuit, unsurprisingly. But we'll confirm the who, what and when as soon as we get another shot. There's Dubek uh, involved in that as well then. His car really did get torn up. And a couple of cars down at pit exit on that grid as they pull up and wait for the all clear to go racing again. We get a replay here of the start. 
And there we see the 69 car, I think, getting turned around on the front end of Vittorio Gorelli. Further back, I think, in a separate instant there, the number one car getting spun around. It seems as though Gorelli has been maybe missing a gear, struggling to get the car off the line when these lights go out. Can he nail it on the third attempt at a start? We get underway and again, Dauenhauer with the nose ahead on the run down to the first corner again. Gorelli uh, may be under threat here for the race lead going into turn one, but he's got the inside line. He goes deep into the corner to try and preserve the lead. They go scattering out across the runoff area and it is Gorelli that leads the way. Dauenhauer now side by side with Liam Hazemann. Luca Lacea passing Paul Giffaut for this position. They are still side by side and then we have Thomas Toffel and Kenko Miura is in the... Oh, Giffaut in problems. Oh, and the 54, the 54 into the pit lane. The champion from last year, the driver who needed a good race this time around, his car is limping into the pits. It looked like maybe a tyre was going down. Uh, Paul Giuffro, meanwhile, is coming into the pit lane. Now, does Paul Giuffro have a penalty of some description? So I think that uh, might be a problem for Paul Giuffro. He's been trying to fight his way back through the order, but the number three car is in the pit lane. Now this time, Hazemans was two tenths quicker. This time he's got a run down into turn one. He has the inside and Liam Hazemans is our race leader. Or is he? Gorelli and Hazemans go, both go peeling off into the runoff area. But Hazemans has muscled his way through. He's used the high ground on the inside line to move into the race lead. Hazemans for Hendricks Motorsport leads for the first time this season in your NASCAR Pro. Yet more wonderful racing here. At the moment, Ulis Del So is giving us some great entertainment. Ulis Del So gets past, or does he? They're still side by side on the run towards turn 12. And there you go. Nicely executed by Ulis Del So. I don't think Tofel is going to have a uh, retaliation to that move. And uh, once again, Hazemans is going to secure a result here at the circuit Ricardo Tormo. He likes it here. He won in 2023 in Euronascar Pro right here at the circuit Ricardo Tormo. And he replicates the feat once more in 2024. It is Liam Hazemans that secures the race victory. Hazemans wins it then from Gorelli in second place. Tobias Downhauer rounds out the podium in P3.